This is getting idiotic. And we need some stability at this time. The largest issue I have with this, other than the sheer incompetence and other fa utter failings that Congress is now having on behalf of the American people, is the fact that now we just are trying to scramble to get the best of what's around. That because... It took forever because there was an explosion, essentially, and civic discord there on the Hill because everyone has been wasting time and wasting our money this entire time. Now, just give us someone. Please, just, just fill the position. So we are now settling for something that should have actually taken robust thought and the weigh-in of constituents. It should actually be held by the best person for the job. And instead, we are being woefully inadequately disserved yet again because they couldn't get their act together. We don't have time for this. Can I add one quick thing? What makes zero sense, Don Bacon voting for McCarthy yesterday and today, uh, Jordan was Kevin McCarthy's right hand. He was his lieutenant. If you like McCarthy, you like Jordan. That's the upside down, backwards ass world that these Republicans are living in. That scathing commentary that you just listened to about Republicans came from Fox News of all places. And as you can tell, they are very much fed up with the whole speaker debacle. Now, at the time that they were having that conversation, it became clear to them that Jim Jordan was not going to have enough votes to become speaker again. And Fox hosts have made it abundantly clear that they are sick and tired of the bullshit and they want it to stop. But since it's not stopping, their frustration is spilling over into their commentary. Now, in case you missed it yesterday, Fox host Brian Kilmeade's reaction to Don Bacon voting against Jordan was caught on hot mic. And uh, here's what he said. Bacon. McCarthy. McCarthy. Dumbass. Yeah. So this is the second day in a row that Don Bacon has been name dropped by Fox News hosts. Now, in an episode of his radio show, Kilmeade addressed this hot mic moment, and he expressed even more frustration at the situation when he referenced his comment there. Dumbass. <laughs> so I was on set of Outnumbered. We were taking the vote live, and this guy votes. Uh, Congressman Bacon doesn't vote for... Jim Jordan, and it just make after the two weeks to think about where Republicans were at, we watched him get lose 20, but that was the first. I did not know my wife, my mic was open, but next thing you know, by the time I walk upstairs at Outnumbered, my seventh hour of broadcasting, my last words were dumbass. Those were the words that were being carried everywhere. I was like, Wow, your mic was open. Your mic was open. My mic was open for six hours and 58 minutes. Nobody cared what I said. But I say one word on an off mic moment, and everyone's like, wow, can't believe you said that. You know, no, one's, no one's really upset that I said it. No one said I'm wrong that I said it. I, I, am, flab I am stunned. I've never seen somebody commit political suicide, a group of people commit suicide, political suicide like this. And then after two weeks of therapy, people going home on their own and coming back, they're still doing the same thing. Yeah, so needless to say, the claws are out for Don Bacon. But we'll talk about why he's still not supporting Jim Jordan in a moment. But first, I want to talk about the actual vote, because Jim Jordan ended up faring worse this time than he did in the first round, with Washington Post reporter Mariana Sotomayor explaining he was only able to flip two Republicans to his corner over the last 24 hours, but he lost four more during that time frame as well, with 22 colleagues voting against him. In other words, it is not looking good for Jim Jordan currently. So I'll tell you what the plan is going forward. But first, I do want to issue some clarifications about my video from yesterday. So we watched this video of Republican Ken Buck explaining why he voted for Tom Emmer instead of Jim Jordan. I guess my first question is, do you really want Tom Emmer to be speaker? No, I don't. I don't like Tom Emmer. I figured this would be the worst job in America. Mike Rowe would not want to do this for his TV show. So if you watched my video from yesterday, you'll know that I enjoyed that clip specifically because of how petty Ken Buck was being. However, after I filmed that segment, he took to Twitter to clarify that he was only joking and Tom Emmer is actually his friend. Now, for some reason, I didn't pick up on his sarcasm, even if it seems obvious in retrospect that he was just playfully hazing his friend. But 
I just, I didn't detect it. And additionally, we talked about Mike Rogers, aka Toupe guy, who said there was nothing that Jordan could do to get his support as Speaker of the House. And I used that quote to demonstrate how vociferous opposition to Jim Jordan was. But it turns out Mike Rogers ended up voting for Jim Jordan after all, something that I completely missed and didn't think to look at. So major thanks to YouTube commenter Jay Boy, who pointed this out and provided viewers with some much needed clarification. Sometimes it's difficult to get the most up to date information when the situation situation is so volatile and these videos go up hours after something takes place but i always try my very best to be as accurate as possible and whenever i fail in that regard i do my best to correct the record so i do apologize for inadvertently misleading viewers in that regard but with that out of the way the question is what's the plan for republicans going forward well, it is difficult to say, but uh, one of the options, as discussed yesterday, which has not changed to my knowledge at the time that I record this, is to enhance the power of McHenry temporarily. And it seems like that idea is still being circulated. However, Jim Jordan himself came out strongly against it. What do you think of these calls us? to introduce a resolution to empower McHenry to be the Speaker Pro Tem on a permanent basis? Would you support that? I don't think that's the right way to go. I think we should get a Republican Speaker. Uh, I got. 90% of the Republicans in the conference are supporting me. Would that help buy you more time? No, I, I mean, I think we should get a Republican speaker. I've been very clear about that. I think that's where the conference is. That's what our rules suggest. So let's get a Republican speaker and get about the people's business. I what if, what if it was His opposition to this plan is not surprising at all to me because he benefits from the pressure that Republicans are feeling to settle for him right now. So it wouldn't buy him more time. It'd buy his opponents more time to come up with someone else who they'd rather support. But if Republicans were to opt for this option, one conservative commentator on CNN explained in a very colorful way how this entire debacle would have been for nothing. This was said in between the first and second vote, but nonetheless, here's what he said. But the obvious road that all of us are seeing, which is at this point, Jim Jordan doesn't look like he's going to be speaker and that perhaps the guy who actually has the gavel temporarily, Patrick McHenry, should have it. Can you, can you talk about that and why that isn't happening like this, if that seems to be where this is headed? Well, it's not in their nature, and I say there, it's not in the nature of the, the conservative wing of the conference to give up. You know, their whole brand is, let's fight, let's fight about everything. And even when we've gotten fewer votes, let's keep fighting and, and, and keep trying to, uh, to deny the reality. And what you wind up with is just another episode of Monkeys Getting Amorous with Football starring the House Republicans. And until you get tired of that show, you know, which is, I think, coming soon based on what I'm hearing, uh, you're going to have to continue to go through this chaos. This Patrick McHenry business is fascinating. He is one of McCarthy's top guys, helped him get the speakership. And if this whole thing winds up with him as being named assistant to the regional manager, whatever title they're going to give him here, which is not in the Constitution, this will be like the biggest circle jerk in the history of circles or jerks. I mean, I mean, to, to have McCarthy's guy back in as a temporary speaker. And and if you're a conservative, and you have followed Jim Jordan, you followed these guys, and you and, and, and you want them to be right. Remember, you're the mark here. There was no plan. Mm -hmm. They had no plan. They threw McCarthy overboard without any plan whatsoever of what to do next. He's right. They ousted McCarthy before even trying to build a consensus for any alternative. And they crossed their fingers, hoping that their number one choice, Jim Jordan, would become Speaker. Yesterday, Matt Gates arrogantly tweeted a picture of him and Jordan saying, Speaker Jordan Day, but after two failed votes, it looks more likely that that's not going to happen. But he's continuing to dig his heels in, retweeting Dan Bishop, who argues the proposal to empower the Speaker Pro Tem is not significantly different than electing Speaker Hakeem Jeffries. It is coalition government between the Democrats and the Republican big spenders. And it makes sense that they think this because, again, McHenry is McCarthy's guy and their opposition to McCarthy has not gone away. So when you consider their position and the position of the Republicans on the other side who vehemently oppose Jim Jordan, it looks like an impossible situation for Republicans to overcome with no end in sight. There just doesn't seem to be a Republican who can act as the consensus candidate. So in the end, 
one side's going to win and the other side is going to lose. And at the end of the day, some Republicans are going to be disillusioned with the end result whenever we see that. So it's a very bad situation currently. But yesterday, we did talk about Jim Jordan's pressure tactics and how they rubbed some Republicans the wrong way. But I do want to dive a little bit deeper into that because Don Bacon told Politico reporter Olivia Beavers that it was so bad that his wife received threatening texts from Jordan's team with one anonymous sender writing, why is your husband causing chaos by not supporting Jim Jordan? I I thought he was a team player. Now she responded by asking, who is this? Oh, now you have nothing to say? They responded again, saying your husband will not hold any political office ever again. What a disappointment and failure he is. She responded to that saying, he has more courage than you. You won't put your name to your statements. Now in another anonymous text message she received, the sender says, talk to your husband, Tell him to step up and be a leader and help the Republican Party get a speaker. There's too much going on in the world for all this going on in the Republican Party. You guys take five steps forward and then turn around and take 20 steps backwards. No wonder our party always ends up getting screwed over. Yeah. So when the spouses of GOP lawmakers are receiving creepy anonymous text messages threatening the careers of their spouse, and on top of that, you have Sean Hannity personally emailing GOP holdouts to strong arm them into supporting Jordan, it's really easy to see why this pressure campaign backfired. Jim Jordan pissed off a lot of Republicans, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and I don't think that he's going to gain support after pissing off so many people. But on the opposite side, the people who are enthusiastically supporting Jim Jordan are doing so because he is the most extreme House Speaker ever, and if they don't take up this opportunity to elect a far-right insurrectionist fascist, then they might not ever get it again. And Jim Jordan is willing to do things that are incredibly unpopular that other Republican speakers would not do. In fact, I'll let uh, Republican Tom Cole tell you why he's enthusiastically supporting Jim Jordan. But unlike any other speaker we've had, he's had the courage to talk about a long-term plan and to get at the real drivers of debt. And we all know what they are. We all know it's Social Security, we all know it's Medicare, we all know it's Medicaid. No president of either side has been willing to deal with this. No speaker of either side has been willing to deal with this. My friend, our former colleague John Delaney and I offered a plan, I still file it every year, John's not here anymore, to go back and do in, in 1983 what we did then and address Social Security. We never can get any help. This is the guy that wants to create a debt commission, a bipartisan debt commission, and get at the roots of our spending problem. That takes courage. It is very bold of him to just admit on national television in front of everyone that he is supporting Jim Jordan specifically because Jim Jordan, unlike other Republicans, is willing to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, a service that... I'm assuming many of the GOP's constituents rely on since they're older, so they're going to rely on that. So you're saying you want to fuck over your own base, which is why you're supporting Jim Jordan. It's wild that they admit things like this. So obviously the party is still in shambles and chaos continues to unfold. But while all of this happens, while the shit show continues to get worse, in the background you have a Kevin uh, McCarthy still unbelievably trying to scapegoat Democrats for all of this chaos. And so what I see, though, is there's no chance in the world that Democrats can ever say again that they put people before politics. They made a political decision to try to bring chaos to shut down a branch of government. And that's wrong. Yes. <laughs> Unreal. Now, that is not the first time that he has blamed Democrats for this, and it probably won't be the last. But it makes him look so unserious when everyone can see with their own two eyes what's going on. The chaos is still being driven by Republicans. They still don't have a speaker. So to say that Democrats are responsible is so cartoonishly comical at this point that it's shocking to me that he still continues to say this with a straight face. So I hope that he keeps making that point because I think that he is going to look like such a clown. Like it's not going to come off as genuine to the American people. And I hope that he doesn't realize that he's hurting himself by saying this because he should continue to say this. So at this point, though, 
everything is up in the air. We really don't know what's going to happen going forward, and I'm not sure if a third vote is even coming soon, but Politico is reporting that detractors of Jim Jordan are actually expecting him to fare even worse if there's a third vote, with an anonymous House member expecting him to lose 10 to 15 more votes in a third round, which could be the last nail in his coffin. So if there is going to be a third vote, it'd be wise for him to not rush it, but either way, there's still no end in sight. All of this chaos is going to continue, the shit show will go on, and I'm glad because this story is continuing to entertain me. And I think that during these really dark times that we're in, entertainment is something that is important. So, so long as Republicans continue to act like buffoons, I will continue to talk about them because I think that we need some comic relief in this time. So uh, thanks, Republicans. I'll continue to uh, broadcast your stupidity for everyone to see. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. Come.